Good afternoon, comrades. It is more than a pleasure to be here at this convention. Just two years ago, I didn't think I would ever attend another convention because I lost mobility and I reached the ripe old age of 82. There's a young man out there. I don't know if he's, uh, I don't know if he's still here. We used to play basketball together. And uh, I was already in my 50s. And when the ball came to me, and him and I used to play two-man basketball. And uh, his name is Tyson is his last name. Y'all know, you know, you know who I'm talking about? You don't know? Anyway, he and I were doing playing one-on-one, -on -one and uh, he turned his head the wrong way, and I drove around him and dunked on him. <laughs> and as soon as he walked into this room and saw me, he said, don't you tell that story about me, Duncan. <laughs> it wasn't, it wasn't a, a great day uh, or a good day to criticize anybody. And I just wanted him to know that he's a, been a great friend. He is now a ordained minister. Amen. Communist ministers can join the Communist Party. Y'all know that, don't you? Yeah. And they can do a good job. I wish Martin Luther King had joined the Communist Party. That would have been nice. Let me read some of the additional names of great leaders who led the struggle for this party from the beginning. And when some of us came along, they not only opened the door, but they held the door so we could walk in and be a part of this great party. First and foremost, Henry Winston and Gus Hall. Y'all, a lot of y'all may not know, but Betty Gannett, brilliant, brilliant comrade. Helen and Carl Winter. The great Carl, the great Claude Lightfoot from Chicago. Ishmael Flory from Chicago. Mildred McAdory, who was in the New York district, but came from Alabama. She was in the Southern Negro Youth Congress. She sat in a bus, a segregated bus that would not move before Rosa Parks did. Member of the Communist Party. Then we had to get her out of town real quick. Let's put it that way. Um, Urban Potash, great trade union leader. High Loomer, a great scholar, the editor of political affairs. And cultural figures. I actually met Paul Robeson. I was just a kid. I was on the program with him. He came up, gave me a hug, and wished me well, and I almost fainted. Paul Roos, uh, people like even Pete Seeger, who I don't know if he ever was in the party, but in the spirit he was, because any time the party asked him, he was with us. <laughs> Many trade unionists who really put their lives on the line to fight for workers' rights were in the party. Pete, Peter V. Catillon who was elected to the City Council of New York, along with the great Ben Davis. Two communists on the City Council of New York, and they did their job, comrades. Esther Jackson, Jim Jackson, wonderful couple, inspiring to all of us. At least we forget W.E.B. Du Bois, who's a member of the Communist Party. Richard Wright was a member of the Communist Party. Lorraine Hansberry was a member of the Communist Party. And I must say, I left a lot of people out. But you could see, 
this was a party of giants. And they were not only fighting for self-recognition, they were fighting for the freedom of humankind. You can't get no better than that. These are our comrades. You know, once uh, I saw a quote from the great jazz saxophonist, Sonny Rollins, who in the 50s used to play at the communist youth uh, summer camps. So some smart ass reporter asked him, well, what are you doing with the hanging with the communists? Man, aren't you, you, aren't you afraid that you'll be criticized? And Sonny said, where I come from, we like communists. <laughs> that is so big, people, if you don't know Sonny Rollins. But I can tell you, John Coltrane felt the same way. I know John. McCoy Tyner felt the same way. And many, many, many more who performed. They were progressive. If you look down the music list of the songs that they wrote, a lot of them were left-wing songs that maybe some people didn't understand, but the people who understood, understood and knew what that meant. Keep on fighting. Keep on believing in freedom and liberty. The other thing is, when I came into the Communist Party 60 years ago, and that's strange because I'm only 23, you know? But <laughs> when I came into the Communist Party 60 years ago, um, I didn't know I could do what I had to do to be in the Communist Party. It opened the door intellectually, it opened the door to a spirit of fighting for our people. It gave purpose to my life because these old timers, they had fought hard and changed the world and they're saying, you go ahead and do the same. And that's what I'm saying to y'all. Y'all go ahead and do the same. This world needs you. But yesterday I was so proud of my running buddy and comrade, Joe Sims. I'm telling you, we we're fortunate to have Joe. Now he's been making speeches like that for a long time. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's why he's the chair of the party. That's why he and Rosanna are a great team leading this party. And that is why we're going to grow and you show us that the party has a great future. I'm going to predict something. I said that by the, somebody remind me, oh, Esther Rose remind me that I had said at one point that by the turn of the century, we'll have socialism. I may have been a little bit optimistic. <laughs> now, now that we're heading for the turn of the century. But on the other hand, why not? Capitalism has shown it has outlived its usefulness. It is not the freest country in the world. It isn't even the richest country in the world, if you want to know, because people like Donald Trump, they got the money and ran with it. And now he walks around like, we're free now, we're free. Hey, what is, who's free? The homeless? Yeah, they're free, they ain't got no house. Who's free, the unemployed? Who's free, the hungry? Who's free the kids who can't get a decent education? Who's free that when COVID came along they couldn't get health care? Who is free when we are, keep sending the people, our healthy young people out to war and they don't come back? Who is free? That's the wrong concept of freedom. The concept of freedom we injected in it is the right to a job, decent life, raise your kids, education, health care. And no racism, male supremacy, no anti-immigrant stuff, no gay baiting and so on. We are fighting for real freedom. And we're going to see it. Because you guys are our future. There, just one more point I want to make. <laughs> uh, yesterday was a discussion that was a little bit controversial, at least for me. 
See, I don't believe that Joe Biden is a, is a fascist. He is not. And it's very important you understand that. You know why he's not? I, don't, I can't see in his heart, but I know who his base is. And those black workers, <laughs> Latino workers, immigrants, white workers are not going to let him do what Trump is doing. That means we got leverage. That means we can go forward and defeat the extreme right. That has to be our goal in this election. You, you can't do everything in every election. That's our goal. And the first priority is don't put that fascist in the White House. Now, you know Trump is a fascist. You ever hear him say he was? I don't, I don't think he ever said he was. But he says it every day by what he believes. He is a fascist. He says that when he gets in power, he's going to put the army on the border. There are going to be people murdered over this. He says he's going to send the National Guard into the ghettos and barrios. People are going to die. He's going to cut women's rights. He's going to cut labor's rights. He's going to cut health standards. He's going to cut help for the unemployed and impoverished. Baby, he don't have to say he's a fascist. That tells you he is a fascist. He is a fascist. I don't think Biden is quite, he's made mistakes. He's a capitalist. But the guy, I don't think Biden is on board with those issues. He can't be because he can't get elected if he does, if he goes that way. So that's the main struggle we have to focus on. A, a, you know, FDR, when the Germans started taking over Europe, was asked, when are you going to send some troops into Europe to fight the fascists? And he said, well, that's a European problem. I'm not, we're not going to get involved in that. FDR, who then went on to send the troops in there because he had to, and then went on to push the New Deal. You know what made him? The broad mass democratic movement with the great leadership of the Communist Party. Understand that. Understand that. And it ain't no joke to make, make statements like that. In fact, I'm sure the Republicans enjoy hearing left-wing people say, uh, Biden is a fascist. He ain't no different. Right. Guess who that helps? Guess who that helps? So we are scientists. We know everybody ain't going to agree with us on everything. If you think everybody's going to agree with everything before we support them, we ain't going to support nobody. So we have to be aware. In the communities of those who are super oppressed, they understand that you got to do some things you may not be totally satisfied with, but that's how it rolls. That's the way it rolls. That's how we will get out of this hell and find a heaven here on earth with socialism. I'm telling you. So, <laughs> no fascists in the White House. fight for peace, economic, and social justice will make sure that does not happen. And I know you all are going to be involved in that. And you're going to get thousands of others to be involved in that. And we're going to be welcome. I like the speech of that trade union guy right there. He knows how to talk to workers. <laughs> Everybody don't know how to talk to workers. He knows how to talk to workers. It ain't complicated. Speak from the heart. And all of you got beautiful hearts based on the class struggle and the fight for freedom. Speak from the heart. Fight from the heart. And we will win. Thank you.